restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. This is what he says, David, verse number four. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. When they're in the middle of the valley of the shadow of death, shadow of death, when I picture the shadow of death and the valley, I think of a place where there's no light. It's complete and utter darkness of loneliness, of despair, of discouragement. It's a place where truly you feel alone and there's no hope and you can't get away because it is the valley of the shadow of death. But David said, even in the midst of this trial, even in the midst of this valley, even in the midst of the hardest part that I'm going through in my life, I will fear no evil because thou art with me. Even David understood in the midst of some of the hardest things that he ever had to go through. He said, I know even though it seems like nobody else is around and even though it seems like death is all around me and I should just give up the ghost and I should just die here in this valley. He said, I can't do that and I will fear no evil because even though I can't see anything, I know that you are there. I know that you'll never leave me and that you will never forsake me. It's at that time when we're at that valley that we cannot fear any evil because he's always going to be with us. There's a poem out there, and I've read it before, and I don't have it with me today, but the poem of Footprints. And if you've ever heard the poem, I don't have it memorized, so I'm just going to paraphrase it, but it's two, it's Jesus and this guy walking on a beach, and they're just walking and shooting the breeze and having a good time and walking side by side, and they're talking and you know, all that good stuff, but this guy enters into some trials, and enters into a bad point in his life, felt like he was alone, felt like there was nobody with him, he was just there by himself, he got through it, he said, he said, God, why was it that when, how times were at its toughest, why was it when I needed you the most, I turned around and, you know, there's only one set of footprints there in the sand, you know, where did you go? So why did you leave me in the middle of my trial? And Jesus looks at him and says, Son, I never really, never left you. So it was at that time when the trial was the toughest. He said it was at that point when you thought you couldn't, give, you couldn't go on and you wanted to give up and give in. And you wanted to toss in the towel. You wanted just to leave your relationship with me. You wanted to just end everything. He said it was at that point. At your breaking point, when you were about to hit the eye of the storm, when you were right at the storm was at its toughest. He said, it was at that point that I didn't leave you, but rather I picked you up and I carried you. I had that poem hanging up in my house, right in my dining room. And I love that because every time I feel like I'm all by myself, and every time I feel like, God, you just left me. You know, sometimes we feel like Jesus as he's hanging on the cross. You know, he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I think sometimes we have that same attitude while we're in the middle of our trial. Sometimes I feel that way. I'm just like, God, why did you leave me? Why am I here by myself? Why can't I feel anything? Why, why am I walking this path on my own? But he says, it's not at that point. Every time I walk into my hallway to go to my bed, my past is home. So right at that point when the trial was at its hardest, it was at that point, I just didn't leave you, but I picked you up and I carried you. There are times... Why would he say this time? Because Jesus is going to come in, he's going to pick us up, and he's going to carry us to the promised land. He's going to carry us to the end of the trial, and then he'll put you down, and then you can walk side by side again. But he said, I never really left you. I just picked you up, and I carried you through the hardest time of your life. Let's go to Psalms chapter 46, verses 1 through 5. Psalms 46, 1 through 5. The Bible says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble, a very present help. And you know, how many of us have been close to getting into a car accident and we call out the name of Jesus and all of a sudden cars jump over cars and they veer away they shouldn't have veered and all of a sudden your car stopped when they shouldn't have stopped or they stopped when they shouldn't have stopped. A very present help. You're in the midst of a crazy, something was about to happen. 
And then boom, Jesus steps in and says, I'm a present help in the time of trouble. You just call on the name of Jesus no matter where you are, no matter what you're going through. You just call out the name of Jesus and he'll be right there. He's our refuge and our strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though mountains shake with the swelling thereof. There is a river, and the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her in that right early. God is in the midst of her. God is in the midst of the church. God is in the midst of your tribe. God is in the midst of your trouble. No matter what you're going through today, if you can just make it a little bit further, right at the eye of the storm, Jesus is wanting to meet you and help you. Psalms 138, verse number 7. Psalms 138, 7. The Bible says, Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou wilt revive me. Thou shalt stretch forth thine hand against the wrath of mine enemies, and thy right hand shall save me. But I walk in the midst of trouble, thou wilt revive me. You just got nothing left to give. You can't see the end. But you can't turn around either. You're just right in that place. Of, do I go forward or do I go back? A lot of times we decide to go back. We don't want to go any further. But if we realize we were just one step away, maybe just one step away from Jesus showing up. Maybe we're just one prayer away. Maybe we're just one worship away. Maybe we're just one day of fasting away. One little thing of effort on our part could get us to where we need to be. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou wilt revive me. Thou shalt stretch forth thine hand into the wrath of mine enemies. So while he's in the trouble, in the midst of trouble, the enemy comes against him and comes round about him. What does David say? Or does believe David in the book of Samuel? It says, by my God have I run through a troop. By my God have I left over a wall. Right we're in the middle of the troop. Everything is surrounded against us. There's no way that we can make it out. Thou wilt revive me. He did it for the disciples in the midst of their storm. He did it for the Hebrew boys in the midst of their trial. He did it for David when he was in the midst of the valley of the shadow of death. And he's done it for you time and time again. And he's done it for me time and time again. But let's not forget the things that God has done for us. Let's not forget all the times that, yeah, that storm, yeah, it doesn't seem like much now, but when you were in the middle of it, that was the toughest thing you've ever went through. And Jesus always met you right there in the middle. Always met you right there in the middle. The same thing's going on today. If you're in the middle of a trial, if you feel like you're about to hit the worst part of your life, just go a little bit further. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't toss in the towel. But just push on just a little bit more. Because if you do, I promise you, Jesus will meet you. He'll give you the deliverance that you need. He'll give you the encouragement that you need. And he will walk with you. And he will carry you to the very end of your trial. Don't let the trial defeat you, but rather, let's do what the Hebrew boys did. And let the trial be a testimony against every person that said it couldn't be done. You know, they say without, you can't have a testimony without a test, right? You can't be triumphant unless you have a trial. You wouldn't know victory if you never had to go through a trial. You've got to understand that He is an on time God. He knows when to intervene. He knows when we've had enough. He knows all that stuff. So don't give up this morning. Let's all stand. I think I'm just a couple of minutes early. Let's stay it. Amen. You got us on the day.